I'm almost at the point I feel like singing. But I ain't gonna sing. I ain't gonna sing for the president today. I'm gonna wait till the inauguration. <laughs> and so what it is is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do what I do. Uh, we can see you, you cannot see me, but we wanna take time out to uh, welcome all of our listener, listeners and viewers and everyone from around the world. We thank God for your presence here on the number one faith-based motivational and inspirational broadcast platform in the country. GMAP Broadcast Network, GMAP1.com. You know, you're going to stop. No, you know what? I was going to say stop laughing at me. But, man, I tell you, man, that's the best thing in the world. Especially when, yes, sir. you know, when, when, when you get up and you look up and everybody looking so frowned up. To see a smile every now and then and to hear a little laughter, man, I might call you just to talk sometime if I, <laughs> if, if I can get through. I'm just saying. <laughs> but I get take time out, man. <laughs> I take time out. And, and, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Welcome. First of all, to the GMAP Broadcast Network family. You know, we are honored, privileged, and blessed to have your presence and welcome to this uh, program on today. Of course, uh, your presence is valuable, you know, and of course, thank you for allowing us to be a part of your journey. You know, very, very, very important. So with that being said, I thank God for your presence here on GMAP. And I'm going to take time out to say I'm always grateful when we have the opportunity to uh, sit back, chat, talk to, find out a little bit more about so on and so forth about the individuals who are making a dent in the world and, of course, the great things that they are doing. And I want to say today is no different. First and foremost, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to let you do it. Intro. Introduce yourself, man. Tell us who you are. Tell us where you're from. And you don't have to go through the long checklist on the agenda because I know it's long, all the <laughs> all the credits that you have. But who is Angelo? Tell us. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, it's an honor to be able to um, talk about the things that we're doing in this world and and hopefully we're laying down, you know, things that that, you know, will be here long after we're gone. Even um, that's the goal is it's legacy. And so um, Angelo uh, M. Goshen, originally from Arkansas, born and raised in Arkansas. I now reside in Columbus, Georgia. I've been here for almost five years now. Uh, time flies when you're having fun. Um, uh, I started writing. I wrote my first book in 2020. And now we are in 2022. And my third is on this way to overcoming self inflicted wounds. Um, I uh, have a beautiful wife, Sharon. We have two lovely kids, uh, Rachel and Malachi. And, and I have siblings. I better shout that I don't want to get in trouble. Uh, uh, a brother, old brother, uh, Antonio, and two younger sisters, Eudrina and Eudina, mm. and a host of nieces and nephews. <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. I tell you, I think after that, I heard you say a couple of things, you know, uh, it's important. Number one, uh, you said the word legacy, and that is huge, huge. You know, uh, uh, Long after we're gone, we still want to be able to provide some form of debt in the world to uh, assist those that are uh, yet coming up or, you know, sitting back, watching our every move. Because believe it or not, you know, that's that's a good point. I'm going to say this right away. 
someone is always watching. We are a role model to someone, whether we like it or not. Someone is paying attention. Someone is watching us. And since you brought that up, <laughs> um, <laughs> I would say before we even talk about not one, not two, but three uh, great publication releases, Angelo, what's next for you as you look over where you've been, where you came from, and where you are now? What's next for you? Oh, man, that, that's a loaded question. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I got a shotgun, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, so this year, well, in 2020, we started, my wife and I started this foundation, the Spill Milk Foundation, uh, where we give um, a $1,000 scholarship to my alma mater in Arkansas Prescott High School, uh, where I graduated. Um, so this is our third year of doing that. And so this year, um, we finally um, got all the the uh, paperwork and all that stuff done to legitimize it, if you will. Um, it's a business now, so it's the Spielman Foundation LLC. So that um, hopefully just to continue to grow that for sure, because um, one day I want to be able to, you know, potentially grow it to where we pay for a graduating seniors all four years college is expensive and when i went i and i know it's probably gone up since so that's one way i want to impact this continue to on my scholarship uh continue to put it forward continue to to assist others um, especially if you see the need feel a need that's just kind of my my motto in life i always now i'm not wealthy by by any stretch but uh, i try to do what i can do uh, because that that money that we give comes straight out of my wife and I's pocket, and but but it's not a complaint. But we we're hoping to grow it to where we still put what we're putting in, but we want other people to to have an opportunity to bless a graduating senior also who will be pursuing higher education. Mm. And after that, we're going to do that's the spill milk scholarship for a traditional student. And next year, we'll be introducing the impact uh, spill milk impact. Um, scholarship and it's for a non-traditional student and that's for anybody with electricians or you know the skillful play um, people who are that we need um, plumbers and electricians and welders and so on and so forth and because they're all important and so we're, we're just trying to keep doing what God we're service men and women and and that doesn't mean we have to serve in, in the armed forces but we're serve we're supposed to help one another along and so that's what my wife and i uh look to keep doing and keep growing and um, it, it's always fun it's a blessing and i say i'm selfish because i love to be able to help people and i love how it makes me feel so i, I want to always have that feeling so i'm always looking for a way to help uh to create to enhance the lives of those around me uh, rather close or, or in the distance. But if I can be of assistance and help someone, uh, that's what we're all about. Wow. Well, you know, I'm going to throw out something, man, that's completely off track. What's up with the helmet and the jerseys back there, man? <laughs> oh, you know, that's that's home. The Arkansas <laughs> Razorback. <Bank. laughs> you know, uh, I heard you, I heard you say Arkansas – and, uh, you know, family, you know, family is out there, man. You know, Little Rock, you know, I got a, uh, uh, my only uncle in the world lives in Little Rock, Arkansas. Wow. And it's ironic because he has the best business in the world. He runs an air conditioning service. Oh, wow. In Arkansas. If you don't have air condition, move. Yeah. <laughs> Just move. <laughs> move. <laughs> I tell you. Now, speaking of first lady, you know, I, I, I mean, you know, being the president and all, you know, you got to have a first lady, someone standing by your side, watching your back, someone you can watch their back. She, I know, I know she's probably around trying to stay out of the way, you know, because <laughs> when, when you invite, when you invite young ladies to uh, 
a, a, a program and that nature. They say I need about a week because they got to go get their hair done, right? their nails done. They even get the feet done, and we don't even look at their feet. You know? <laughs> so is there, is there any chance that I can just get – she ain't even got to show a face if she don't want to. But just just put her foot – Put her uh, 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 her hand, you know, because I think it's uh, 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 very important. You mentioned spilled milk foundation, and 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 I want I want to know who's responsible because that's something that we really need to get out there. Something that people need to understand. Everyone is not out to scam you. Everyone not right. bad. You know, everyone does really the best they can. And to find someone that uh, is really trying to reach out and help, we need to expose that. We need to present that. We need to notice that. I mean, the first lady can just say hi, wave her hand, uh, uh, whatever, you know, whatever. Say hi or wave your hand. Something. (laughs) She better not wave her hand. She better not just wave. He said, I knew she, he said you better I not just she, wave your hand. I knew she was going to do that. <laughs> he said I, he knew you was going to do that. <laughs> I, I, I knew she was going to do that. Just wave her hand. <laughs> oh, my. See, I know you ain't. I tell her. Tell her I know she didn't go to the hair salon. He said he know you didn't go to the hair salon. I know you didn't. I know she didn't go get her hair done. Uh-huh. You know, her nails done. But you know, she said, oh, your nails done. You know, that but would be correct. I know she didn't get a pedicure. You know, but if she could say hi, please tell him. He that said, he just want you to say hi. Just That's stick it. right here and just say hi. Just she said, give her just a ah! second. <laughs> so uh, that'll be coming here in a second. <laughs> <laughs> tell her, tell her it's too late to set an appointment now. You know. Yeah. <laughs> But I tell you, yeah, man, uh, off, you know why? Why? Why we? Uh, why we do that? Let's uh, let's dive right in because I know that um, there's some outstanding things out there. Some some great, I guess you could say, great publications available uh, for the convenience of others. And uh, we, like I said, we we definitely want to uh, present those uh, to people around the world. Um. Let's start by simply um, talking about your upcoming uh, release, okay. the latest one, uh, which I'm sure, I'm sure people are going to really, you know, receive a lot from. Um, if you don't mind, tell uh, about the current publication that's getting ready to be uh, presented uh, to people around the world. You know, uh, let's talk about it. Uh, what is it? Overcoming self-inflicted mm-hmm. wounds. Tell us about <laughs> it. Yes, sir. Oh, man, that, that book um, is loaded with uh, my many trials and things that uh, I had to deal with. Although um, I was dealing with them, God gave me the idea to write the book because although my trial might not look like yours, there are some similarities. And although trials have similarities, but guess what we also do as people. So I I get excited about this, but but to overcome one's self, a lot of times it's the individual that's causing the problem, but we, Mm. we don't recognize it nor do we want to address it. It's hard to look in that mirror. And I'm not talking about to see your reflection in the mirror. I'm talking about to look in that mirror, look past the flesh, the outside and see who you are. A lot of times it's scary to look and like, wait, that per I don't like that person, but that's the reality check that we all have to face. Even I had to do it to write this book is like, that that mirror, ooh, that, that's not it's not what I want to see, and that's not who I want to be. But I had to go through these things to help somebody else. And now that I see that a lot of my problems stem from me, a lot of my things came from the things that I was doing 
or wasn't doing. You, people pray for many things. Uh, I'm going to touch on this real quick. We pray to God for a lot of things that we are supposed to already be able to do. Yeah. And I know people are going to be like, you pray to God for anything. You can. But let's just say finances is one of your strong suits. Okay. You want to have financial prosperity, right? But you spend more than you bring in. Well, how is that going to prosper you? That's a self-inflicted wound. Mm. Okay. Let's say you want to say, I want to build a relationship with Christ, but you, you don't pray. You don't read your Bible and you go to church on, on Wednesday or Sunday or whatever day of the week that your service is out. But those are the only times you, you think of the Lord. So how is that building your relationship? Mm. That's self-inflicted. We talk about we want to be better to our children, but yet every time they do something wrong, we're, we're screaming at them or trying to punish them instead of calling them to the side and saying, hey, we don't do it that way. We do it this way because this is why, or we don't do it that way because of this. We Those are self-inflicted, but yet we're mm -hmm. praying to God for the things that we actually can't control. We can control our everyday life. God gives us free will, and a lot of people um, don't understand. So a lot of our problems come from us. We create those problems, those yeah. issues, and that's why this book is important. I hope you go out and, and buy this book and read it and, it and it touches you. Even when I was writing it and I had to go back and read it and I had to change a couple of things because I was like trying to hide and skim over. I was like, no, let me give it to them in full capacity versus trying to sugarcoat it because it, it doesn't help anyone. It right. didn't help me. And so if I'm going to help someone, I got to tell them the truth. And so I had to go back. I had to completely write a chapter. This is after the book. I have the actual book, <laughs> the book, you know, um, the pre-sale copy. And I, I wasn't happy. And I was like, well, let me go back and change this because they need to know that you're going to do some things. But you also have to ask for forgiveness. But in the midst of that, you have to forgive yourself oh. that self-inflicted wow man you know I, I i i i had to give a speech one time well i had to speak and one of the things that came out of my mouth first you know it was at a rehabilitation center in this area pretty big one and the first thing that came out of my mouth was, you have to learn, first and foremost, not how to forgive others, but how to forgive yourself. Man, that is a powerful statement. You know, I once told somebody, the niceness in me is not my mask. My mess is my mask. Mm -hmm. I'm hiding the true, honest, loving person behind this. So, oh, my goodness, don't you get me started. You know, <laughs> behind the person that's filled with a lot of drama, animosity, mm -hmm. anger. You know, I'm, those are self-inflicted wounds, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, so I can uh, I can only imagine uh, uh, the great read this is and the great read it's going to be for many others. As many people need to know this as possible, because that's so, so, so very true. Going to move. I, wa I want people to really, really know that all you have to do is go get your copy. Self-inflicted wounds, overcoming self-inflicted wounds. Angelo, and of course, uh, we're going to find out a little bit later on what it's going to take for him to go ahead and uh, for you to go ahead and show your support uh, uh, by getting your copy of this publication. But in the meantime, uh, we're going to continue uh, our journey moving on here on the GMAP Broadcast Network, loving what I do. Uh, once again, welcome to the number one faith-based motivational and inspirational broadcast platform in the country. And of course... Uh, we are grateful uh, to be talking with this young man, and we are going to continue to move forward. We talked about overcoming self-inflicted wounds. What about spilled milk from trauma to trauma? Oh, man. So... <laughs> <laughs>
uh, spill milk from trauma to triumph. So the title, actually, this is a true story. So uh, one day I was walking, I uh, just got home from the grocery store. I was going into the house, but I had the bags in my hand, but the keys were kind of like wedged between my finger and the bag. And so I was trying to switch hands, but I had a gallon of milk in the hand I was trying to switch from the gallon of milk. Somehow I didn't have the handle, but I thought I did. The gallon of milk plummeted to the porch, burst it, it's leaking all over the porch. The old me would have been frustrated, like, oh, I just bought this milk. I got to go get some more milk. But uh, I was like, okay, well, I'll just go in the house, get, get a pitcher of water, come out here and rinse the milk off the porch, you know. And as I was going, you know, back outside to to pour the water onto the milk onto, on the porch, um, the title is like spill milk. And I was and I was thinking, I was like, my mom used to always say, don't cry over spill milk when we were kids. And uh, <laughs> that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. And and so I was like, wait a minute, spill milk. So I type it in. I Google. I had already had the idea that I wanted to write a book, but I didn't have a title by any stretch of the imagination. And so I said spill milk. And that was going to be the standalone title. And someone already had a book spill milk and i was like well i don't want to have you know that i don't want to get mixed up i was like wait a minute i've had a lot of trauma in my life and i was able to triumph over those things because i'm still here i'm still standing and so spill milk from trauma to triumph was born and in this book i just talk about life like I, I of course i don't go through everything that would have been like 20 books but i just kind of skim over from humble beginnings where i come from into where i'm at you know in the present or at that time it was 2020's present i've done a lot since then also but um and i just kind of break it down the title of the chapters aren't chapters they're pints like pints of milk so it's pint one pint two so i go on and so forth um and so I, I just just bring you bring you to up to speed to all the things that I had to overcome. But the realization that God was with me the entire time is what I want people to get once they read that book. Now, this is not a uh, religious. I know everybody think that, that that. No, it's not that. This is just me saying I now I know that my help comes from the Lord. Mm -hmm. This is me saying I know if I was in my my flesh. There's no way I would have gave up a long time ago, but my spirit was running for the Lord. And so those traumas, okay, yeah, I had I went through those things then, but I triumphed after those things because I, I never took my eyes off the Lord. Now the beginning, I didn't have that relationship with the Lord. So let's get that clear. I was I was doing worldly things and I talk about that. And but the worldly things weren't adding up to victories. They were creating more problems and i realized okay it was time to make a change so i just talk about life in arkansas growing up the move to georgia you know by myself and then bringing my son out here with me and going through ministry learning you know um how to be a, a minister and preaching and teaching um the gospel and all those things it's full of like the I mean, you'll laugh, you'll cry. You, it's full of emotion in that book because I, I, it was written straight from the heart. So I talk about all the obstacles, all the things like, like, um, failing the fifth grade, going to jail, infidelity, like the list goes on and on. Yeah. I, it's, it's, it's not long. It's a short read, but it, it's impactful. And I hope you know those who have read it and those who will read it get a lot from it. Amen. Wow, man, I tell you. I'm gonna write a book. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to have you assist me. Um, okay. Uh, the first two publications that we've covered are very interesting. The name of, I and, and I came up with this ten years ago, and haven't even began yet because I think, I think on all honesty, it needs to be told. But you said some things right there. You may not have even recognized how you just helped someone. A lot of times we do that. But the name of my publication is going to be Confessions of a Pastor. The Kevin T. Strauder story. When I first started preaching, teaching, when I was licensed and ordained, get this, I wasn't saved. I wasn't serving Christ. 
I was serving self. And mm-hmm. when I first looked at ministry, I said, well, as long as I'm going to go to this place, I might as well try to find a way to stand out. All right. So I decided, I said, oh, maybe I should, maybe I should try preaching. <laughs> right now, right now, they look like the most important people in the room. So <laughs> maybe I should dive into that, you know. So, but people don't know, Angelo. Like they, they don't know that when you become or when you focus, I don't even want to say become, that's really a bad term. When you focus on trying to do something like that, sometimes your motive is horrible. Mm-hmm. Your motive for, my motive for becoming a preacher way back then was not to speak, preach, and teach the word of God. But I did it well because I felt that in order for me to really get through to the people in my motorative way, <laughs> I don't even know if that's a word, but if it ain't, I just made it up and I'm going to trademark it before somebody steal it. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Um, My my motel, I had to get to them in the way that they can understand. And, 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 and I I just want to say that my motives were impure. Mm -hmm. They, 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 they weren't out there for the right reasons to do the right things for the right people. But then, I'm going to tell you how God works. I was still finding myself hanging out in those places that I shouldn't. The places like bars and nightclubs and, you know, hanging out with the fellas and, you know, in the man cave and smoking and drinking and all that, you know. And then I found myself ministering to them because that was my purpose. And and I didn't even, oh my God, I didn't even realize it. But then I thought about something. Paul said, I became all things to all men that I may win some. So as long as I'm winning some, I'm Mm -hmm. doing what I'm supposed to do. So my purpose, with my motive, my motive became my purpose. Mm. My motive, my hidden motive. I'm I'm telling you, man, it's so deep. You brought out Mm -hmm. a lot. My motive became my purpose. And instead of going into those places indulging, I went into those platonist witnessing Mm -hmm. in such a way to where it hit a lot of people and they didn't even know they got hit. (laughs) Because I still go in there, you know, go and order me a drink, a Pepsi. You know, they didn't know orange juice, but they thought I was drinking gin gin and juice. (laughs) But I was drinking orange juice. Mm -hmm. And you'll find yourself getting caught up while you messed up. Yes, sir. Okay, moving right along, because I can preach to you all day. <laughs> I, <can't, laughs> I, I really, 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 really don't mind. Okay, I don't mind, <laughs> yes, I don't mind shouting. And, of course, we are uh, grateful once again to be here uh, with this young man. And, of course, uh, uh, Angela is one of our featured authors on the GMAP Broadcast Network, gmap1.com. If you don't know, now you know. Uh, Stop by our platform and easily click on the tab that is titled Featured Authors, and you will see not one, not two, but all three of his publications. Now, Angelo, let me try to let me try to pronounce this, okay? Okay. All right, all right. If I mess it up, don't laugh at me. (laughs) Myopia. That's it. Myopia blurred vit. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> My, and, 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 and you know, it, it it's not hard to pronounce if you just look at the word. Mm-hmm. 
I looked at the word and said, well, I do what a lot of people do on like social media. They trying to share stuff and they putting their personal business out there, but they can bind a lot of the text. So you gotta mm-hmm. kind of you gotta kind of break that text down. Break it up, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell us about it, man, if you don't mind. Yes, sir. So myopia was my second work, and what happened as I was watching, you know, the world twenty twenty unfold the way it did, going into twenty twenty one, and until now, um, even there were a lot of things that were heartbreaking. Um, to the masses, not just me as an individual, but to the world, we were dealing with the with the COVID crisis, right? And but in the midst of that, we had you know the the death the the deaths in the street at the hands of the police. We had death in massage parlors by you know gunmen and and all these things. And then we had, you know, the the Black Lives Matter, Blue Lives Matter, All Lives Matter, all these movements and all these moving parts. Everybody wanted to be heard, but nobody wanted to listen. Mm. I'll say it again. Everybody yeah. wanted to be heard, but nobody wanted to listen. Stop right there. Stop so, right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. Yes, sir. Stop right there. <laughs> I just wanted that to marinate in the spirits of the people, the viewers and listeners that are tuned in right now and or catch the rebroadcast because what you just said is so important. Everybody wanted to be heard and not listen. Continue. Yes, sir. And so in the that book, Myopia, is probably closest to my heart. That doesn't mean the other ones aren't important. But myopia was written in a place of darkness, I'll say. And I don't mean dark like I was wanting to do bad things, but in a place I had to go really look. OK, we are talking about, you know, social injustice. We are, we are looking at this pandemic and how some people, you know, say, well, they did that. The government, you know, how all all these different opinions and varying things. Then I was like, but wait a minute. We don't even love one another. We're blaming everybody everywhere for everything. But we did not stop and say, well, wait, what am I doing? Am I helping the situation or am I hurting the situation? There's only two. And and there's a right and there's a left, right? There's you're right or you're wrong. And sometimes people think because I'm not saying anything, well, I'm neutral. Well, if something's in your heart of God, put something in your heart to make a move towards something, then if you're not doing it, guess what? <laughs> you're you're in the wrong. And a lot of people don't want to recognize that. But when God placed this book in my heart, it was important for me to say, OK, I got to take the gloves off of this book. This book, Myopia. First, let's talk about the title. My wife gave me that word myopia. And I was like, wow, I had came up with blurred vision. And she was like, myopia. And I was like, yeah, because if the medical term, that means nearsighted. For those who don't know, myopia is nearsighted. Okay. So what is nearsighted? Meaning you can't see things in distance, right? Perfect title. We can see things close to us, but we don't see things in the distance. So blurred vision. Okay. Our vision is is skewed, right? It's blurry because we're looking at things from only our vantage point, right? We're not looking at it from his, from her, hers, theirs, them over there. We're just only, oh, it doesn't affect me. I'm okay. But yes, um, the George Floyds, the 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 Colin Kaepernick, even before them. So Colin Kaepernick took a knee. So he was already getting the ball rolling right when it came to it. In in the recent years, we know all Martin Luther King and Malcolm. We, we get that. But just in in recent, so 2016, I believe Colin Kaepernick took a knee. Everybody was in in up in arms about that, right? And then, well, look at what came to light. After that, look at look at what was and I know people say, well, they were just putting what they wanted to see in the news. I'm not talking about just white cops killing black people. I'm talking about people killing people. Mm. I love all people. I'm yeah. talking about people killing people, not not just cops, not just I'm to all of us need to look like what is really look at just what happened this year, what's happening this year. They're mass shooting after mass shooting after mass shooting. And then we're sitting here pretending like 
there's nothing. We have a problem. There is a problem. And no one, we have problems within the churches. Why are there so many churches? I'm not going to preach, but we have, you can walk a city block and have 12 churches and each church has two people well how's that benefiting anyone right so we don't we, we don't want to recognize that right. in ministry i recognize that yes yes <laughs> yes 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 and i talk about that in myopia and then we got people who okay if the the end game is to make it to heaven or paradise with christ whatever your belief is if you're trying to get there, then why can't we have a discussion together? Why do we have to have 17,000 denominations, but we're all trying to get to Christ? Make, <laughs> people don't want to look at that. Make that make sense. Well, then, well, you can't do this. We don't believe that. We don't. Well, whoa, whoa. whoa. What does the scripture? I'm not asking you about your opinion. See, people want to opinionate everything. What does the script? You know, there's no denominations in the Bible, but people don't want to talk about that. Right. <laughs> That's reality. There's no, there, what, what was Jesus for the people? And guess what? Churches, you cannot sit behind the four walls comfortable and then the world is falling apart. We got to get back out there in the streets. What was oh, Jesus God. in the streets? He was walking. Right. He was telling people. He wasn't behind, you know, the walls of the tabernacles and those things. But we think that we can, we're comfortable in here. It's comfortable in this church. Yeah, we can get in here and every, Okay. And in this book, I posed a question in myopia. I said, well, if everybody in the church is saved, then who else is being saved? Who are you mm. helping in your church? You're not getting any new members in. It. You're not inviting people in. Everybody in your congregation is saved. But who else are you helping? Who are you leading to Christ? If oh. everybody's in the church, well, then we can't lead anybody else. If we just like our doors are closed, we're, we're full capacity. Well, when did Jesus say he was full capacity? I'm still trying for somebody to show me that in the Bible. Man. When did he say there's there's room for us all, but we we're not doing what we're supposed to do. So in myopia, I'm talking about everything. I'm talking about society as a whole. Yes, I talk about the cop problem. I talk about the church problem. I talk about the personal problem. I talk about everything. Again, I don't write for length. I write for impact. Wow. I'll say it again. My books, I don't write to have, oh, I gotta have 70,000 words. No. Is it impactful? Okay, can I get my point across? If it's just 20 pages, did I get my point? Did I make an impact? And so that that's myopia kind of in a nutshell. And I just hope people will will read it and 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 support it and, and see where I'm trying to go with with that work as well. Man, you know, I hate to say it, Mr. President, <laughs> but I I honestly believe that there's some kind of relation here. Uh, and I'm going to tell you why, just to piggyback off some of the things that you said. I used to walk around this city. I used to literally walk up to pastors and say, hey, pastor, boop, I won't say their name. I say, but why don't you, why don't you connect with that pastor mm -hmm. and both of you run one church mm -hmm. instead of you having this church and all you have is three members right and he has six so he feels like he's more powerful than you mm -hmm. i'm gonna tell you something about the church angelo lost people aren't coming to church troubled right. people are Mm -hmm. The people that are coming to church are troubled, so they're looking for help. Lost people aren't coming because they enjoy being lost. Mm -hmm. When I was out there drinking and drugging and all that, I enjoyed that stuff. Yes, sir. But when my being lost became troubling to me then i went to church because i said to myself i need help mm -hmm. so let me tell you why jesus didn't quote unquote have a church he wasn't trying to save the troubled he was trying to save the lost mm -hmm. i didn't trademark that you can use it <laughs> <laughs> I 
Oh my goodness, this is outstanding because really, I and, and I tell people all the time, I don't have interviews. I have conversations. We talk. And mm-hmm. our conversations can go any direction. And I appreciate you sharing what you've shared. You have, and you have so much more to share. You know, I didn't even, I didn't even hit the tip of the iceberg, as they say. You know, because mm-hmm. let me say, I'm gonna say it again: myopia. Yeah, I can, <laughs> I can say that now. You know, <laughs> I, I can say that now. But uh, uh, once again, uh, we thank God for you. And looking at reality, as we look here, uh, overcoming self-inflicted wounds, spilled milk from trauma to triumph. And listen to this, myopia, blurred vision. All three publications, I tell you. Angelo, I want you to say your last name for me. It's Goshen. Goshen. I, I I didn't want to mess it up, so I figured I'd have you say it, Goshen. Angelo M. Goshen. Yes, sir. Yes, now sir. I got a friend. I got a friend in Houston, Texas, by the name of Angelo Michael Martin. And <laughs> it's not the paint. Well, he's a painter. He he's a wizard, and but he <laughs> yes, doesn't sir. paint. You know he. It's weird because he is a wizard in a studio. And Mm. 30 years ago when we were in high school, he was still doing what he's doing now. Wow. And 30 years ago, he'll tell you, 30 years ago, I'm still doing what I am doing. I mean, what I was doing back then, I'm doing it now. Back then, I was DJing. I was the number one DJ in the in the region back in high school. As a matter of fact, a club owner went and fought for me in court to be the disc jockey in his nightclub, and I wasn't even old enough to be in his nightclub. Hmm. And he won. At age 18, I was DJing in the number one nightclub in the Chicagoland area because he fought for me. He believed in what I was doing. And you're doing now what you did. This didn't, you know, your journey didn't just begin. I believe, now listen to me closely. I want you to take this and hold on to it, Angelo. Mm -hmm. I am a firm believer that your destiny was determined before your delivery. Mm-hmm. I believe that. When you were not even formed in your mother's wound, your destiny was already determined. All you have to do is be willing to accept the process. And the process is based on your decisions. One thing that God allowed us to do was make up make up our own mind. I hate it, but He did. Mm-hmm. All right, I tell you, man, this I'm gonna have to cut this off, man. We might be here all day. <laughs> you know, moving right along. Uh, did our uh, first lady ever make it back from the beauty salon? Uh, what is it? she walked in here and I don't know where she went back. Somewhere. Oh, she for, so she, 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 oh, she forgot. They they did her nails, but they forgot the pinky. So she, <laughs> she did, I, is she coming? She's on the way. Okay, okay. Because I just wanna, I wanna meet her. As a matter of fact, I want you all to sit tight. Don't move. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I'll be back right after this going to take a short break. I believe we deserve one because I, I'm going to tell you why this conversation is still going because I'm enjoying it. Good, um, likewise. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. Um, 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 and, and, and the reason I say live on air conversation because I'm not trying to give you a job. I'm not going to interview you. Okay. I'm going to conversate with you because that's the only way I'm going to get the real you. 
You know, when you go interview for a job, you're going to tell them people what you want them to hear. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. You know, what kind of person are you? I am a terrific person. You even, you, <laughs> you, you even disguise your voice sometimes to make it sound yes, encouraging. Right. You know, but if you're conversating with, that's why if I was a a, 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 a president or a, a top notch at a, a, a Fortune 500 company, I wouldn't call you in for an interview. I just pick up the phone myself and call you mm-hmm. and say, hey, Angelo, uh, could you come in for a minute? I'd like to talk to you right now. See, but because th- then you catch them off guard. They, they might be dressed in blue jeans and tennis shoes, but when they come to you for an interview, they're going to put on their Sunday's best. Come on, man. Stop it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let me give you a drum roll. All right, all right. Uh, I don't know if she can hear me, but 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 share the, share the uh, if you want to share the headphones or pull it off, put, put, it, put it out, let her hear me. Good afternoon. She she got talking to Mike. She got talking to Mike. I can't hear. I, I I'm having trouble. I I want to make sure I hear. Okay, I can't I can't hear either one of you now. So whatever you did when you did it at first, do it do it again because I want to make sure I get you uh, uh back live on the air, uh so we can hear you, uh because she. I don't I don't hear you. So I'm going to take a quick break and let you check and let you uh, 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 check the place. Uh, but I can't I can't hear the microphone. OK, so so when you talk, I'm not able to hear you. OK, um, for whatever reason, uh, we're going to make sure that we get this, because anytime we can talk to first lady of the president, you know, we we we, we you know, we always want to be able to hear her. But. Right now, I'll tell you what, as I said before, I'm going to take a quick break. uh, And when we come back, we're going to hear um, from Mrs. Am I saying this right? Goshen? Nod your head because I can't hear you. Am I saying that right? Okay. All right. We'll be back right after this on show. Gotta double check to see if I uh have his microphone back. Uh Angelo, say something for me. I can only hear you on the phone. Uh I'm not really sure why. I tell you what, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and go back into a quick commercial break. Uh, maybe you could sign out and sign back in uh to see why. Maybe it maybe it needs to be uh re- reconnected in some way. Uh but for for some reason, I'm not hearing uh, the microphone anymore. But, you know, that's how the devil works because we must be talking some good stuff, you know. And, and you know, we got to be talking some good stuff. And it could be, you know, Internet connections and all this technology. It could be anything. Uh, uh, uh. So we're going to take a, break, a quick break. We're going to let you re-sign in and stay on the phone. Are you still on the phone? Okay, stay on the phone because if if you need another password, let me know. But try to try to reconnect with the password I've given you. Is that okay? Yes, sir. 
I'll be back right after this on show. I should make that. I should make that a, a music, a, a intro or something. Man, man, oh man, oh man. I love it. I love it. Yeah. You know, I love my job. Uh, I don't believe there's no man alive that loves their job as much as I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't care if you like it or not. You know, I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing because God told me I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. You That's know? <laughs> hey, First Lady. <laughs> Hello, sir. How are how, you? How you doing? How does it feel to be married to the President of the United States? Oh, my God. It's such an honor and a blessing. <laughs> wow. You know, I, I, and I realize I got to get through the assistant's assistant to the assistant. To get to the assistant's assistant, <laughs> just to get to the assistant to see if I can talk to the a uh, uh, personal assistant <laughs> to maybe. <laughs> I 
I tell you, boy, you know, that's how things work. You know, good afternoon, and uh, let me uh, uh, say uh, welcome to the GMAP Broadcast Network, and uh, thank you. Thank you so much. I know it was spontaneous, but there's no way that I would have conversated with Angelo without taking the opportunity at least uh, to conversate with you. You know, and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, my wife and I are celebrating 17 years of marriage tomorrow. And congratulations! Se- thank you so much. 17 years. Well, hey, you would re- you would say congratulations at the top of your lung when you realize they didn't even think we'd be married 17 minutes. Oh, and then since we get <laughs> since we couldn't get divorced that fast, they gave us 17 hours. But that was still impossible, so they started. Then they said, well, they won't be married 17 days. And then yeah. that didn't work. They said they'll be in divorce court in 17 months. And I tell you, we are grateful. Tomorrow we're celebrating 17 years. And wow. let, me tell you, let, 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 let me tell you the key to that. I'm still on my honeymoon. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And tomorrow I'm going to surprise her. I hope she's not listening. But tomorrow I'm going to (laughs) surprise her because tomorrow we're getting the exact same location we got 17 years ago when we celebrated our wedding. Oh, my goodness. The exact same location, (laughs) the exact same room. I'm sorry, but the exact same bottle of wine ain't gonna be there. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to mimic that as much as I can. <laughs> you know, I might, I might take a, I might take the picture that 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 we took that day, and then have the same bottle behind the picture. You know, something like that. I'm gonna try to get as close as I can. I, I but. Uh, you know, uh, I want to take time out because, you know, it's always great, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, uh, to see a young lady standing firm, not in front of, you ain't trying to be nobody's boss, not in back of, and you ain't trying to get him to lead you. You're sitting right by his side. So you're going through the trials, the tribulations, the ups and downs, the good and bads, the right and wrongs together. You know, you're not making him go through it and then bringing you into that madness. You know, you know, uh, 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 uh. no, 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 no. Angela, you ain't supposed to bring in your baggage. No, y'all, y'all start, (laughs) start fresh and move in it together. 18 years ago, my wife said, let me tell you, I, I had one listener. Oh, 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 that one listener was me. Okay. <laughs> My wife said you must really like listening to yourself talk. And I said, but every time I open my mouth, I feel like I'm speaking to a million people. Here it is 18 years later. We're in over 176 countries. Thank God for all of you. We're averaging over 1800 people a day. We are coming off of our sixth straight stellar award nomination. And my wife looks at me. She said, they can take my job. They can take our home. They can take my car. They can take our money. But they are not going to take that ministry. Now, this Mm. is, yeah. It's the same woman that told me I must really like listening to myself talk. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> she must she must really like listen to herself talk to me so, <laughs> 18 years later we are blessed and we thank god for the blessings and of course i want to share that blessing with each and every one of you and uh, i thank time for you you know i thank god for you taking time out to be uh, uh on angelo's side you know that's important to me every time i see it you know i i i i told my wife that divorce is not an option Mm. good bad ugly we're not getting divorced if you want to divorce me you're gonna have to find me as long as i don't get divorced from you you'll always be my friend 
and I don't want to lose that friendship ever, oh. ever. And when Absolutely. I see it in you two, it's the blessing, you know, and I'm speaking honesty here. You know, it's a blessing because we don't see it often. Everybody these days can do anything with anybody anytime they want. And it's amazing, Angelo, how you mentioned earlier why it is not acceptable for gunmen to go in a church house and shoot up the place. But it's acceptable for gangbangers to kill each other. Mm-hmm. We, we have become an acceptable society. Yes, sir. It's acceptable for us to have 15 churches on one block with two members each. But it's not acceptable for all those pastors to somehow shut up and listen. Everybody want to be the chief, but we don't want to have an Indian. Leave me at Indian ship status. Mm-hmm. I like learning. But we whew, don't y'all get me started. I don't mind shouting. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. You know, but but what you said earlier, Angela, I'm telling the truth, what you said earlier is so important because in order for them to know they need to hear it, they're not gonna accept it if ain't nobody telling them. I want to be I, just like I did when I first got into my ministry. I said, hey, the most important person in the room is the pastor. I wasn't even saved, but I wanted to be a pastor and did. So, 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 so that's important that you said that. And people need to know, hey, why can't we come together and work together so we can go out and save people together? We scared mm-hmm. to go out in the street because we got too much pride to, you know, on that brick and mortar facility. Jesus didn't have a church. I can care less about your beautiful church. You, you are not getting a dime from me for that $6.8 billion extension. For what? All right. Mm-hmm. I give you my life if you tell me you finna walk down there and purchase a hotel and give that hotel to all the homeless people. Mm. I give you my life. But for yes. 6.8 and then you want to be picky about who come in your church. Right. Right, right. right. Oh my God. See y'all get see see? That's why we conversate. <laughs> That's why we conversate. All right, firstly, I, I I really I really appreciate you being here. Introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about who you are. Uh, uh, and, and of course, I'm going to want to hear about Spilled Milk Foundation. So just go ahead and be you. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. Well, first and foremost, I'm a woman of God. Um, I'm blessed to be um, Angelo Goshen's um, wife, and I have uh, beautiful children. Um, um, I also am an entrepreneur, um, up-and-coming author, uh, business owner. I've been in the medical field for... Um, over 20 years and um my passion is to serve wherever god leads me to serve that's what i do and i do it with uh it's just it's just my passion so and and certainly um just watching my husband thank you so much for giving him this opportunity um i wouldn't be anywhere else but by his side amen wow you you know that's that's powerful because i tell you you know i I I even tried to drive my wife away. I tried to drive her away. I meant the things that I was saying. Uh, I don't want to say really the things that I was doing, but the things that I was doing. You know, I tried to literally drive her away. Because I, I, I believe at a, a, a moment in my life, I wanted to go back to doing what I was doing before I got saved. And she wouldn't let me. She wouldn't let me. Wow. I said, you know, I'm leaving. No, you ain't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she didn't even, she didn't even have to go into detail. <laughs> you know, it was you ain't you would get a pot on the back of your head. But you I'm leaving. No, you ain't. You know, I, I'm doing it. No, you ain't. You know, I'm, I go in the bathroom 
and, and try to lock the door. Nope. <laughs> Nothing worked. But she stood firm. She made me realize just how much she really cared about not just me, but my well-being. Mm. You know, and that's important. Wow. When I look at you two, hey, no matter what, um, somebody say, well, what did you do? Uh, you know, I, I can tell you some stories, but I won't. This is about <laughs> you. I mean, what did you do? I said, I allowed us to always be at the beginning when we fell in love. Oh, I allowed wow. us to be always on our, every time I see my wife, I want to make sure I tell her how beautiful she is. <laughs> Even if she get up in the morning and she got that stuff in the corner of her eye and you know, the breath, <laughs> the, the stuff, then the breath is kicking, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna still tell her because on our wedding day, I had never seen a glow like I saw that day from my wife, ever. And every time I tell her how beautiful she is, she gives me that smile and she glows. And I don't, I don't want to lose that. I just don't. Okay, I done got us all emotionally oh, wind up. You know. Oh. <laughs> Uh, you know, and I'm glad you said that, sir, because I have to give a shout out for my husband because you just described him. He is so loving and so kind and um, just, you know, just just wonderful. Um, and, and again, every day he'll tell me I'm beautiful. I wake up in the morning and the hair is everywhere. <laughs> Eyes not open and still just so loving and just so gracious and kind and um, and and just really committed to us, even on the days when I'm not feeling it, he refuses to let Satan get in. And uh, I'm so grateful for that. So I'm, I'm glad to hear your story. And I know your wife is a blessed woman. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, when I ride with you. I, I was riding with you all the way up to when you said, you know, my wife is a blessed woman, but I don't disagree, but I'm a blessed man. Mm. Okay, I, I'm not I, I'm not going to take the credit that she deserves because she is the one uh, that is accepting my mess. She is the one who, when everybody else is dogging me out, disrespecting me, dishonoring me, you know, she is the one that's saying, I don't care what you say. That's my husband and I'm going to stand by his side every day. As a matter of fact, she told her mother way back when, and this is what convinced me. She said, if you don't like my husband, then I'm just going to have to come see you. Mm. And mm. when she told her mother that, I don't know what happened, but her mother became my best friend. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Because she said, hey, if you don't like my husband, then I, we're not going to come over here. I mean, uh, uh, we you don't have to come over here. Then I'll just have to come see you. You know, that wow. meant that that spoke volume to me because that told me right then that, you know, when you marry, you come together and you move out and you go forth as one. Tell yeah. us about the Spilled Milk Foundation. Tell us a little bit about it. Come on. Come on. No, no, um, no. First lady. Yeah. Yeah. First lady. I'm talking about <laughs> you. Yeah, don't oh you try to yeah, don't you oh try don't goodness. don't you try to shift the weight off over there that no oh, tell us a little bit about it. I'm glad that you asked me because you know there's always that perspective, that other perspective. And my husband, he always um, you know, you know, he talks about it, but I don't think he gives himself full credit. When spilled milk, um, when the foundation was formed, um, we didn't have much. We were going through a time in our life where money was tight and almost non-existent, but he had committed foundation to making sure that he gave a thousand dollars to a student. And uh, he, we didn't know where it was going to come from, but he was like, babe, let's just pray about it. And we're going to make this happen because God gave this to me. And sure enough, we, we scraped it together. We, um, we put it together and he went out and he presented it and um it, it's been in the works ever since and i think this is the third recipient so far 
um, that he has given a scholarship to, a thousand dollars, when I think we might have had twenty two dollars in the account. But God multiplied and tripled that because of his faithfulness and obedience to what God had called him to do. And um, you know, and and I'm just I'm just so proud of him, and I'm I'm glad to be a part of that. And the Spilled Milk Foundation is growing. Um, not only is it now going to be scholarships, but um, he's thinking of adding an impact award so that it's not always uh, driven by grades, but maybe there's someone in the community that just needs you know, a hand, maybe a child that's not performing as well in school, but performing excellently in the community. So I'm, I'm just looking forward to seeing how he's going to grow this. Well, I, I, I was riding with you on everything you said except the word he <laughs> I mean I'm just being honest that's just me Yes, I rolled with you every step of the way but he is not going to be able to do it without replacing the letter H with W okay I hear you. I hear you. And I, I and I'm I, glad you reminded me of that because he often corrects me. I'll say he, 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 and he'll always say, no, baby, it's we. That, we are that, one. I told him we was related. <laughs> I told him. I, I'm, just, I'm just not fortunate enough to be the president yet, but I'm related <laughs> to him. <laughs> so, so I'm just saying. But I, I am so honorable that um, both of you, and I, I, I would love to, uh, I, I'm going to just let you know, uh, I would be honored to make sure that I do everything in my power to assist you in any way, shape, form, or fashion, not just uh, disseminating information about the publications. That's important, and I am so honored to, my m myopia. I just wanted to say that again. <laughs> I just, uh, you know, I, I'm going to put that in the sermon next week. I don't know how, but I know, you know, uh, I don't know how, but I'm going to say that word, you know. Um, but I, I just I just want you to know that you have our number. And and by you having our number, uh, um, it looks like home. Okay, there you go. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. By you having our number, I want you to know that you'll be able to reach out and use that phone number and contact us and let us know what what it can what we can do. Anything uh by any means necessary that we can assist you. Uh all you have to do is pick up the phone. I want you to know all you have to do is pick up the phone and ask. The answer will always be yes. And you will never, ever, ever have to ask us twice. I want you to know that. I mean, it from the bottom of my heart, it's not about. All it's about is you said something so important when you said, why can't we just come together? You know, um, um, and I'm, I'm grateful God allowed me to do what I do, because when I first started this ministry, I had that one pastor, Angela, I believe I was telling you, he told me, I know you're licensed and ordained now, Kevin, but. Where's your church and who are you preaching to? And I started, oh, oh my goodness, years ago. I started the first official LLC online church. Okay. I, went, I went from six people to over 1,600 people in less than six days. Wow. I, I'm going to say it again just so you can make sure you hear it. We went from six people, and this is funny. The six people was my family. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. The six people were my family. Me, my wife, and my kids started our church. In six days, we had over 1,600 loyal listeners. Then we went from listenership to membership. We sent them out information to say, hey, if you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior, we all, all we're asking you to do is believe. You don't, 
You ain't got to sign. You ain't got to give us a blood sample. You know, <laughs> none of that. All you got to do is believe and accept that, you know, by faith that he can and will guide you every step of the way. And we went to, and, and, and see now today he's like, he's become a stalker because he wants to know how he can do what we're doing. It's amazing how the tables turn. It I'm, is. Yeah. It's amazing. So with that being said, uh, I'm going to try to say his last, your last name because I just have trouble. I keep wanting to say guy and not go. Okay. So <laughs> I'm trying to get it right. It's Goshen, right? Goshen. Okay. See, I keep, <laughs> I'm, see, I keep, I keep twisting go like go like go like right. go. I'm running for the Lord. Like, go run for the Lord. Okay, see, I didn't, I didn't put something together now. It won't be messed up. No, it's just like myopia. I can say that rolling off my tongue. Now, tell us, first of all, first lady, before we let you go, how people can find out more information about uh, the Spilled Milk Foundation. And then, uh, 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 Angelo, before we let you go, we want you to tell us how people can go out and show their love, care, concern, and support uh, for not one, not two, uh, but ultimately, all three uh, publications that you have blessed the world with. And I didn't say you, me. I said the world because any and everyone who receives a copy, you spoke value when you spoke about those publications, man. And that was some serious stuff, especially when you got deep and said you got 12 churches on one block and all of them got two members. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, <laughs> it's not funny, but it's funny. You know, it's so true. You know, I'm going to First Baptist. Well, I'm going to to, to First whatever, and, and and they right across the street from each other. All right. Hey, girl, how you doing? I'm going to go over here. No, no, it's just crazy. You know, but tell us uh, how they can learn more and get more information uh, about Spilled Milk Foundation, and then we're going to push it back off over to you, Angelo, and find out how they can receive the publications that you have blessed the world with. Tell us, tell us. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Well, actually we're in the process of updating the website, but um, it's uh, with Spilled Milk Foundation. Um, if right now it's just the email, um, we're still in the process of, before we kind of just kept it under wraps and just did it from a personal place. And now we're just starting to, to go ahead and, and reach out to schools and reach out to, to individuals. Um, but right now, uh, spilledmilk20 at gmail.com. Um, there is a web, I mean, there is an email address um, that we've gotten if you want to reach out to us with any questions or, you know, any suggestions or any partnerships. Um, and we will have that uh, website up and running um, up soon, very, very soon. Um, didn't expect, again, it was just something that was from the heart, kind of kept it personal and in-house and then realized that there's a lot of people out there who might be willing to partner with us or, or maybe able to, uh, first of all, be able to benefit from it. So um, certainly um, www.spilledmilk.com. Um, we're speaking that, but it will be up and ready to, you know, to, to be, you know, explored within probably the next week. Let me tell you something. Angelo, don't, don't, don't hit me. Well, you, but let me tell you something. It's already done. See, people don't realize that when they speak it, they've already spoke it into existence. Absolutely. And Absolutely. we all know about the word faith. Angelo, you know about the word faith. Yes, sir. We can go to Hebrews. <laughs> you know, I mean, come on. That's the biblical standpoint, the biblical definition of faith. Mm -hmm. The substance of things hoped for and the, the evidence of things not seen. Now, you know, in order to be uh, convicted in the court of law, you got to have evidence. DNA. Scratch that. Angela, I want you to take this one, man, to your next message that you deliver. Tell your people, tell God's people to step out on faith. And I want you to have them utilize the first letter 
in each word. For all, I trust him. Mm. Mm. And tell him to hold on to that. Yes, sir. That's good. Absolutely. For all, I trust him. Don't trust me. Don't trust your wife. Don't trust your brother, your sister. Trust him Mm -hmm. to work through her. And there's nothing you won't be able to accomplish. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely nothing. My wife looked at me and she said, ain't no way I'd have told you I wanted to be somebody's wife that was preaching. (laughs) Mm -mm. You can preach, but don't mean it when you get home. Get back. (laughs) 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 Angelo, tell us, man, how can we get a copy of the publications and or the one that's coming up? Yes, sir. Um, on my personal page, uh, Facebook, just Angelo Goshen. If you scroll down, you know, in the bio stuff, you'll see the link, uh, the Spill Milk link that has my landing page. You can order all three books there. Those are directly from me. So I'll sign and personalize all of those who order from from there. Also on my Instagram, uh, all lowercase, angelo.m.goshen. The link is in my bio also for my landing page and you can order from there also. And in the weeks to come, the website will be up fully functioning and and ready to go. So you'll be able to also get it on there. And I will probably reach back out to you about that. So we can, we can spread the word that is up and available. So anybody wants to uh, donate to the foundation, the scholarship or any of those things, not to mention, I almost um, forgot to say this, but when I sell books on my landing page on my website, I give a portion of that to the scholarship. So the thousand is already there, but then whatever over the thousand, like let's just say I take 2% of each book sale and add that to the thousand. So we're always looking for a way to give. So if you're buying from my website and not Amazon, but please buy on Amazon as well. We're not saying don't buy on Amazon, but um, when you order it from my page, that, that some of your proceeds does go to help with the scholarship. And we won't allow the world to forget about little old GMAP Broadcast Network down here in the lower left-hand corner of everything in small print. (laughs) (laughs) But the last I checked, small print is the most important print on the paper. Most important. We don't mind maintaining that position. As a matter of fact, leave us there. When everybody else want to be up and large, bold print, some of them even bold, bold it up and italicize it. <laughs> leave us in small print and regular writing. Just leave us there. We'll stand alone if we have to, but just leave us there. You can always stop by GMAP Broadcast Network and, of course, click on the tab that is titled Featured Authors. You will see not one, not two, but all three. Bloom ting um, of these publications there. All you have to do is click on them. It will take you to the necessary location to find out more intimate information and details about not just the author, but the publications also. I want to tell you something, man. Uh, I don't know why God gives me stuff. I don't even understand why God put me in this position. I don't deserve it. I'm just being honest. But build your website as a matter of fact if you got to go to wix.com they'll give you one for free and if you don't know how to create one call me all right okay i created my website from a blank black page because i got tired of getting these ridiculous prices from people who were telling me they build it then they want to charge me $2,500 to build it, but then they want to charge me $500 a month to service it. I don't need your servicing. So I got tired of calling these people, getting these ridiculous prices. I just said, what would I like to see? And I did it myself. And I'm still doing it. Just All put right. something up and put something out. It, don't got, it, it ain't going to never be perfect. Are you perfect? Oh, no, no, sir. Not and at all. If God had to wait for you to be perfect, man, oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
he ha- God would have blank membership, mm-hmm. blank believers. You know, we are not perfect people, and we won't ever be. The only time in life that you were perfect is when you were first born. Mm -hmm. See, we don't, we're not born to hate, lie, cheat, steal. We're taught. Mm -hmm. So when I think of the like Nazi groups and all that, they're not, they're not born that way. They're taught to be that way. Believe in yourself, believe in him, and stop wondering what people might believe if they look at you, and you'll be fine. Trust me. You know, so go to Wix.com and start building your site. And be careful, because expect the unexpected from social media. Don't depend on it. My pastor, the Dr. Wade A. Stevenson, called me and said, Kevin, Should we maintain our website? Because now we got Facebook. I said, absolutely. I said, because Facebook will block you out for just being you. So with that being said, listen, make sure that you launch your website sooner than later. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, yes, man. Sir. I'm gonna let you. Uh, since I didn't talk to you to death, uh, no. <laughs> uh, I want you to uh, have your closing remarks and final words uh, as we prepare to let you go. Um, share with the viewers and listeners around the world what's on your heart. I'm gonna move over, and I'm gonna say, Angelo M. Goshen, the floor is yours. Um, first, I would just like to say thank you for being obedient and reaching out to me and giving me this opportunity to be on your broadcast. Um, I really appreciate it, Pastor Kevin. Um, it, it's an honor. And anytime these things you know, happen, I, they're not by chance, they're by design, I believe. And this was this was designed and not only for this broadcast, but uh, relationship wise, I believe we'll be able to work together in the future and continue to grow um, the kingdom of God, you know, using our voices and, and words and, and showing love. It's an action word. So I want people to understand that you, you show love you, you, with your actions, uh, not your, not your verbiage. So again, thank you um, to those who I want to support, like I said, those you can go to my social media pages right now. Soon website will be up and and each book uh, has special meaning. And I hope that the readers are able to pick up on what is being conveyed, the message that goes along with the words on the page and not worry about how you feel um, and and get emotionally charged, but be guided by your heart and understand the message that's in those books. And every time that you are in a place um, that you don't want to be in, one of those books has a way for you to to seek out the kingdom of God first. And I always, I always want, because I, I would be remiss to say it's me. No, it's not me. I have written those books, but those books were in my mind guided by Christ. I didn't even know I was going to write one book. Now I have three and not to mention Spill Milk Foundation. It is it has the scholarship, but it's also uh, we provide ghostwriting um, services. So we'll help if you have a story you want to be told and don't know where to begin. Uh, reach out to us. Uh, Spill Milk 20 at Gmail dot com and, and we'll get the process going for you. Tell you what you need to do and all of that. And and we'll work out the business side of it, but it's more about the message. If you have a message and you don't know how to get it out, please think, consider us um, at Spillman Foundation LLC uh, for your publication and, and book writing needs. And above all, I just want to uh, say, if you're in a place, um, no man can get you out of bad situations. Christ can get you out of everything. 
So I'm just encouraging people. If you don't have that relationship, it's not you can't get it from your pastor. You can't get it from your spouse. You can't. You have to go to Christ for yourself. It's, that's important. It's your relationship. It's your personal relationship. You have to study that word for yourself. You have to put in the work to build and grow your relationship with Christ. Don't rely on the preacher or your pastors because we can't get you. We don't have heaven or hell to put you into. We're just vessels, willing vessels, but we want to do it the right way. And so I always encourage people, go read it. If I say something and you're questioning it, go read it. I try not to opinionate anything, but use good sound doctrine, biblical uh, context and explain it as best I can. And so I'm just saying, if you don't have that relationship, it's never too late to begin building that relationship. We can have all these things, the books and the business and the things, but none of these things are for us personally it's for the glorification of christ because we know who has done everything for us and who's brought us out of everything even overcoming those self-inflicted wounds um it was christ that led us and so i just want to say thank you for the support uh again thank you at gmap for having me on and uh, god bless Mm. i always hear thank you Everybody tells me that all the time. But I want to flip the script and thank you for accepting. Um, it's good. You know, and we can be on here all day. We can do a twi- <laughs> we can do a 24-hour program and never run out of nothing to say. I'm going to get back to our regular scheduled program, but before I do that, let me do this. Heavenly Father, our Father, our God, we We come to you first and foremost to say thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this young man. Thank you for allowing us to come together to give you the praise. Father God, we're asking you to continue to look down upon him, upon me, upon our purpose, upon our wives, upon our families. Look down upon everyone that is connected to him. We ask you to bless, heal, guide, deliver those that are in our circle and beyond. We're asking you to give us strength to move forward, to do your works, to do your will. Father, we're asking you to keep your loving arms around us. Give us strength. We honor you. We praise you. We worship you. We glorify you. We magnify your name on today because you deserve it. There's nothing that can compare to what comes after God is. So we just wanna say God is. We thank and we praise you on this day. We praise and we thank you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. 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 And amen. God bless you, man. I'll be in touch. Might have to do a little editing, but I really don't want to because I like people to hear us where we are and not where we want them to think we are. Uh, yes, sir. So, so hey, it is what it is. And uh, we're going to find a way. We're going to find a way to air this conversation because you, we, I mean, we, because I, I have a tendency to talk, but, 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 there's a lot of this conversation that needs to be heard. You know, uh, we always say we wish we had a, or we mm-hmm. wish we hadn't a, mm-hmm. but we did. So yes, if we did, it was meant for us to. Mm-hmm. I'll talk to you soon, man. i give you a call shortly, man. Until then, you have a fantabulous rest of your day, okay? All right, you too. God bless.